to welcome you to Pike Electric's live line demo. Pike Electric is a power line contractor out of North Carolina, Mount Airy, North Carolina, is a home headquarters. Uh, we are a full service provider for our customers, meaning that we uh, engineer, we build substations, we also build transmission lines and distribution lines all across the United States. We also uh, are a, a final stage manufacturer of bucket trucks and line trucks. And this truck you see behind me here was actually built there in Mount Airy, North Carolina in our fleet division. On the truck today we have David Staggs, Joe Cox, my name's Andy Cleary. We all work in the safety department at Pike Electric. At one time we were all linemen out in the field. Right now we all work in the safety. This truck you see right here, we have three of these trucks that run across the United States in different places for our customers and also our employees. The primary reason we built these trucks is to raise the awareness of working safely around electricity. So we're going to show you some things today hopefully you can take back with you that will make you better linemen, make you work more safe around electricity and also you know, to raise that awareness of, of working and dealing with every day some of the dangers that's hidden working with electricity. To explain our truck, this truck is basically a, a rolling substation. We're uh, getting our power from 12208 coming up through that mining cable there out that transformer. Right now we're working on low voltage. What you see here, the power poles, the, the wire, is the same thing you see out, out outside feeding your homes. The middle pole you see right here is a recloser. This recloser, we're going to show you how it operates. The recloser is actually a fuse that can actually count and it counts each time there's a fault put on the line. You see a cutout at the top? That's a bypass for the, for the recloser. On over to where Joe's standing, we have another cutout, we have a transformer. Also on the back side of that pole, we have an underground line that feeds like underground developments and businesses and things of that nature. We're going to show you what happens when, uh, when you make contact with the buried line. And also on the back of that pole, we have an outside light. Also have a light right here. This green light means there's power to the truck. When I squeeze this trigger, the red light will come on indicating there is power on the line. You ready? So we have power on the line. A few problems that power companies have and, and co-ops have is animals getting on top of transformers and knocking out the line. And we have Sammy the squirrel here today. He's going to make his debut here. He's going to show you what happens when a squirrel or an animal makes contact with an energized transformer. It's going to be a loud noise, so prepare yourself for that. You ready? A lot of people, when they hear that noise, they automatically think, hey, my transformer blew up. But actually, what it is is that, that fuse, that there's a fault on that transformer, that fuse will blow. The lineman comes out, he refuses the, the transformer, gets the power back on. The middle recloser, the middle, the middle pole here has a recloser on it. A recloser is designed to operate when there's a fault on the line. In normal operations, that recloser will operate three different times. And on the fourth time, if that fault hasn't been cleared, it will stay out. We're going to put the recloser through a fault situation. If you listen real closely, you can hear, actually hear the recloser uh, clicking and counting each, each fault, that, each time that fault hits the line. You ready? We'll come back to the recloser here in just a minute and show you, show you one other thing that a, that a recloser will do. On the back side of that pole I showed you earlier, there's, a, there's an underground line that's simulating the underground. Uh, a lot of power companies, most power companies, co-ops, uh, municipalities, do use uh, a line like this to feed, uh, feed underground. Uh, it carries primary voltage. We're going to show you, show you why it's very important that you get your locates before you do any type of excavating work around your home. And, and uh, this stick right here represents a shovel. That employee puts his foot on that shovel. If he doesn't have that locate, or it could be that backhoe out there digging. This is why it's important you make sure you call and get the proper locates before you do any digging. You ready?
And again, a loud noise, the lineman will come out. Most of the time they'll find the trouble. It takes a little bit and they'll fix it with the power back on. Going back to our reclosure where David is. This reclosure has a second option or, or second job. It's also called a one shot. And David put it on one shot. Lineman that's working out in the field, you know, moving, moving primary lines, reconductor and things of that nature, are required to put this device on one shot. And what one shot means, if there's a fault on that line, it's going to go out one time, the first time, when the fault hits it, it's going to stay out. One thing we do at Pike Electric is a lot of storm restoration work. We work all over the United States on, on uh, ice storms, uh, hurricanes, tornadoes, wind storms. One thing we do is what they call flag tag and grounding. And the guys right now are taking the line, taking the recloser off the line. They're going to establish a visible opening on the line. And Joe's going to test the line for voltage. Make sure there's no voltage on the line. The next thing we're going to do is install a ground on that line. A lot of customers wonder why it takes so long to get the power back on. In some situations, our guys got to work safe. We've got to protect our linemen. Our linemen are installing these grounds on the line for protection of, of the employees out there working. Also, David is hanging the tag on the reclosure, tagging that device out. And also is going to hang a flag on the grounds, on the line next to the grounds, indicating visibility for the grounds. This is your typical lockout, tag out, or flag tag and ground situation right here. The next part of the show, we're going to, the guys are going to have to switch the, tr the transformers around just a little bit. They're going to come off the truck and we're going to retest the truck and make sure that we have no bleed over. Uh, you notice David and Joe both have all their PPE on. They have their hard hat, safety glasses, or gloves and sleeves, FR clothing, and also their overshoes. Because this is a live situation. We're getting ready to switch it over to uh, primary voltage, and we'll be drawing some arts and uh, things of that nature. Our rubber gloves and sleeves, we have a test lab in Mount Airy, North Carolina, at our home headquarters. We actually test our own rubber gloves and sleeves. Uh, we, uh, we test them by the OSHA standards. In some cases, in a lot of cases, we succeed, you know, those OSHA standards on dielectric testing the rubber gloves and sleeves. It's very important our linemen take care of these gloves. OSHA requires a, a, a daily test of, of our test in that glove and also a visual test of that glove to make sure there's no holes in it. When dealing with hazards, you always you always want to try to eliminate the hazard first. If you can't eliminate the hazard, you got to find a way to protect yourself from that hazard. And our gloves and sleeves are our protection for that. Along with our cover-up, our rubber line hoses and our blankets that's on the truck, they all work in conjunction together with PPE when you work in energized lines. David and Joe's going to come off the truck, like I said, and we're going to retest the truck because we're switching over to primary voltage to make sure there's no uh, leaks on the ground system. Zero. Zero. Next thing we're going to do is step up on the truck and we're going to actually read the primary voltage of this line and tell you what the primary voltage is. Six thousand three hundred volts. So anything over six hundred volts is considered primary voltage, and we're way past that. So right now we're going to be dealing with uh, primary voltage. You notice we have a tree here. You know trees are really nice. You know they, they they're real pretty to look at. They also can cause a problem for uh, power companies and, and co-ops. Uh, they actually grow up into the line. The wind blows. Uh, maybe the tree over, lightning hits the tree, and it causes a lot of damage. I want you to pay close attention to this, ladies and gentlemen. If you would, look at the top of this tree. This is a tree making contact with 
6,300 votes. Now, if you would, look at the bottom of this tree. This would be where the employee would be standing or the customer would be standing cutting the, cutting the tree off the, the line. It's about 11,000 degrees in one-sixth of a second. Just to prove the point of how conductive trees can be, we're going to remove the cutout on the far pole there and we're going to bridge that cut out with a small tree limb. A tree limb that actually came off this tree right here and see if we can get the light to burn. See the light, light's coming on. Now that's just a small tree limb. You can imagine a tree, a whole tree, how conductive it can be. This is going to simulate an antenna. You know, years ago, back in the 70s, you know, there's a lot of TV antennas up. Now we have cable vision and satellites and things of that nature. But there were a lot of people injured you know, during that time installing TV antennas or CB antennas. This could be anything around our home that's conductive. So always make sure that we are uh, you know, very aware of our surroundings when dealing with uh, you know, working around anything that's conductive when it comes to power lines. If you would watch this here, look at the top of this when it makes contact with 6,300 volts. Now watch the bottom. Again, always be aware of your surroundings when uh, working around your home or your business for power lines, overhead power lines. The next part of the demonstration, we're going to demonstrate a, a power line that could be laying off, you know, laying off the pole onto the ground. And a lot of people have a misconception when it comes to it. They, they think, hey, that power line's, you know, it's broken, it's laying on the ground, it's not energized. But this here is going to show you that a line that's lying on the ground can very well be energized. It can actually insulate itself, and no one will know it until they go to pick it up. I'm going to energize this. You see our light behind Joe is burning. It looks harmless, doesn't it? Look what happens when Joe goes to pick it up. Also, a lot of power lines have a thick insulation on it around the conductor, and it could be laying on the ground energized and no one would ever know it. So always be aware of any power line on the ground. Make sure you treat it as, as energized. Do not, do not touch it. Do not try to move it. The next part of the demonstration, I'm going to uh, demonstrate a kite string. How many of us like to fly kites? I'm sure this crowd, maybe a few of us, we're a little bit old maybe, but we have kids at home that love to fly kites. And we're going to show you just how conductive a small kite string can be. And all we have here is your basic, you know, kite string that came right out of the, off a roll. We're going to show you how conductive a string can be. See our light is burning. Uh, you imagine a small kite string, that conductive, imagine rope like this rope in front of me right here. This rope, you may think it's non-conductive, but what happens after we use it a time or two? It gets dirty, it gets, uh, gets oily, gets wet, and it actually can become a conductor just like, the, uh, just like the kite string. These balloons that Joe is holding right here is called a mylar balloon. Mylar is a, kind of a thin aluminum. We're going to show you how conductive a uh, mylar balloon can be. Conductive enough to pick up the coils of the transformer and energize the light. Next part of the demonstration, actually, this looks like a ladder, it has a tire on it. This could represent our, our bucket truck, our boom truck, or even our own vehicle when we strike a pole. A lot of guys think that maybe because that tire is, is rubber, I'm okay, it's insulated. If you would, watch this demonstration here. Watch the bottom of this, this tire right here, see if you see any fire coming off of it. 
And one thing we do at Pike Electric, all our equipment, bucket trucks, line trucks, even this truck right here you see has, has a ground on it. We take that ground and it, it's bonded to the frame of that piece of equipment and we actually take it and put it on the, the neutral line uh, of the power line we're working on and, and ground this equipment. That's what David is doing right now. He's installing his ground on this piece of equipment. Then he's going to take it and put it on the system neutral. Always have good continuity, make sure everything's good and tight. And at this time, we're going to put it back into the primary. We're going to show you how good our ground system works. If you would, I know you want to look at the top of this, but look at the bottom where the fire was a few minutes ago and see if we see any now. Ready? On the hot. Didn't see any fire that time, did you? The ground system, that's the reason we ground here at Pike Electric. OSHA says you can either barricade like this or ground your equipment, and we ground our equipment. And your ground is only as good as its weakest link. You always make sure your ground system, your grounds are in good shape, good and tight. The surface contact, make sure it's good and clean. Take a wire brush and brush it. Next part of the demonstration, we're going to show you what happens, what can happen when, when the human body comes in contact with the, with the power line. Now we have a hot dog that represents the human body. A hot dog is made up of a lot of water, just like the body is. Our body is made up of a lot of water, a lot of, a lot of tissue. We'll always keep, up, keep back that hot dogs with you. The human body is made up of a lot of water. You have a central nervous system already in your body. So when the human body makes contact with the power line, there's a lot of damage there. And there's always uh, the chance of, of the heart stopping because every, every contact is normally hand to hand or hand to foot, right in the direct path of the heart. So this is what could happen if the human body makes contact with the primary line. Ready? Our rubber gloves, we have a rubber glove here that actually has a pinhole in it. Also has a hot dog in it representing the, uh, a hand. We're going to show you why it's very important our linemen, every time they go to use that rubber glove, they do a test of, of air test and also a visual test on that rubber glove to assure there's no hole in it. That was a small pinhole earlier. the size of a eraser head on the pencil now. We have any volunteer firemen in the crowd. There's usually one or two in every crowd. We have a fireman's boot. A lot of firemen think because they have that boot on, because that thick rubber sole, then I'm gonna be okay. But what's inside that rubber boot is a steel shank, and that steel shank's in there for protection. So we're gonna show you what happens when a, a fireman boot makes contact. David, close your uh, cutout. Close that cutout. Here at Pike Electric, our linemen are required, anytime they're working around anything energized, make sure they have their overshoes on. Our overshoes are for incidental protection only. And what I mean by incidental protection is, in case a line becomes energized, or say a piece of equipment becomes energized, and that employee would happen to be leaning against that piece of equipment, these overshoes are for that type of protection right there, incidental protection. If you would look, this overshoe here actually has a small hole in it. We're going to show you why it's important our linemen inspect their overshoes. See the fire at the top. Now we have a, 
a good overshoe. It's not a brand new overshoe. It's actually an overshoe that's been worn. It does not have a hole in it. I'm going to energize this. You guys ready? Yeah. Our lights on. There's primary voltage. Do it again. There's primary voltage on that overshoe. You don't see any fire. And that's the reason we wear overshoes at, at Pike Electric, for protection for incidental contact. Well, that concludes our demonstration. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. There's one thing you keep in mind, electricity is, is, is safe to work on. You've got to respect it. And all your PPE, all your cover-up is, is a tools that you need to use every day when working on uh, energized lines. Thank you for your time.